Hello. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Good, Good afternoon, afternoon, sir. Uh, uh, so sorry for the inconvenience because exactly uh, sharp, sharp one o'clock, uh, there was a power cut. So it took about 15 minutes for us to set up everything again. Right? So I'm so sorry for that. Beyond my control. Uh, in the last class, we discussed the articles of URC522, and there we have discussed up to Article 25. Twin, uh, twin, Article 24. Right? Article 24. Uh, Article 24 clarifies the collection instructions should always provide guidance to the procedures to be followed in the event of protest. Now, Article 24 talks about the protest. Protest means protesting the international trade transaction. Not, not that the protest we are having at the moment at golf is huh? a different thing. Now here, uh, if you have the URC double two, please read the article, Article 24. Article 24. Article 24 covers regarding the protest. The collection instructions should give specific instructions regarding protest for uh, protest or other legal process in lieu of, in in lieu thereof in the event of non-payment or non-acceptance. Normally, if you have gone through the uh, collection order form, you you may have seen. There is a column to tick. Protest, yes or no. Now, protest means in a scenario of a non acceptance or non payment, then the beneficiary will request, they have request the remitting uh, uh, collecting bank to take legal action against the legal action against the buyer or the wrong right now this is a different thing uh, now legal action means if if the buyer has not accepted the draft or if the buyer has not uh, done the payment on the due date then in a scenario like that we have to, we have to, uh, the uh, customer, the seller is requesting us to take appropriate legal action. We call it protest. Right? Protesting means in a case of a uh, default to file a case against the buyer. But if you're going to file a case against the buyer, you have to do it within one day. Can you do it? No, it is impossible. First, first you have to uh, file the case and then you have to uh, uh, submit to the courts, right? Then the courts will give time uh, to submit it. Then after that, you have to fight the case. It's a long, long legal process. So therefore, we have modified this protesting business by adding noting and protesting. Noting and protesting. Noting. Can you see the board? Can you see the board? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, we can sir. see the board. Yeah, no issue. Right. Right. So the noting is you have to first you have to contact a notary public 
normally every bank they have their legal officers legal managers who are lawyers who are having a uh, notarial license right so uh, you have to mark that payment under a notary public after that that has to be done immediately after that then you can take your own time to to bear the uh, legal case and to submit to the uh, courts right but noting and protesting is a expensive thing very expensive thing and after uh, we do the noting and protesting um, after spending all that money uh, simultaneously the uh, buyer and the seller might sort out the issue outside the bank and they will say okay we don't want any protesting so by that time we, we may have spent 100000 rupees right so therefore to uh, to collect the money is also will be a problem so therefore uh, normally the banks doesn't want to get involved in noting and protesting and that is why they merely say noting and protesting when when the remitting bank requests us to do noting and protesting we will tell them sorry we are not doing it right then article 25 article 25 is case of need what do you mean by case of need case of need is in case if the uh, buyer is not taking the documents right then in the collection order form we nominate a person who is going to look after the business for or on behalf of the uh, exporter in other words it is exporter's agent right so case of the in case of the scenario uh, if the buyer doesn't take up the documents then the case of need can appoint another person but only thing what you have to understand you have to keep it in your head those powers has to be specified when you nominate a case of need otherwise it will be null and void Otherwise, it will be null and void. Any questions? Any questions? And Article Twenty Six provides guidance as to the content and the application of a number of advices. Again, a practical thing. Whoever handling uh, collection bills in your respective banks, and I don't know whether you are handling, you have to monitor them properly. You have to monitor them properly, even the the payment and everything, right? So, uh, Article Twenty Six says. When we are handling a collection document, every at least uh, every fortnightly or every ten days, anyway, periodically, we have to give the fate, give the fate of the bill to the uh, remit income. We have to tell them, right? If you are handling the bill, you have to tell them why we are holding the documents. 
Okay. Any questions on that? Otherwise, after 60 days, after 60 days, you can return the documents back to the remitting bank. You can return the documents back to the remitting bank. Right? Okay. Anything else you want to know under URC, uh, URC findable two and collection? I'm going to put a stop to the collection at the ankle. Right? Okay. In that case, we'll move on to the other payment method. That is documentary credit. Documentary credit. Uh, this particular class, I'm sorry to notice, people are very, very silent. I don't know why. I request and I, I want you to ask questions and clarify your gray areas. It's very important. Right? Okay. Document credit. Uh, under this, the learning objective is what a document credit is and its main features. And then we are going to discuss about the principles that determine the processing and interpretation of document credit. Right? Then the responsibilities and risk of each party is involved. The various types of DCs and ICC rules for DC operation. Can somebody tell me what is the ICC rule for uh, DC operations? UCP 600. UCP 600. Yes, very good. UCP 600. So definition. Definition of LC. Uh, LC or a documented credit is an irrevocable undertaking issued by a bank. Irrevocable undertaking. Under day. Right? Uh, is an irrevocable undertaking issued by a bank on behalf of the buyer. On behalf of the buyer. Right? Buyer is the importer. To, to the seller, that's the exporter. Right? Uh, one moment. Uh, to the seller, the exporter, to pay for goods and or services. Provided that the seller presents documents which comply fully with the terms and conditions of the document rate. Right? So, in other words, according to this definition, for a bank to pay, for a bank to pay, then the document should be fully complied with the terms and conditions of the LC. That is why we said documentary credit, right? The main features of the definition, the, but I have just discussed with you. It says irrevocable undertaking given by a bank. Irrevocable undertaking. What do you mean by irrevocable? Hmm? What do you mean by irrevocable? Come on, you guys know English. What do you mean by irrevocable? Can 
cannot be rejected or revoked cannot be rejected or revoked no there are, there are few more things to add to that definition no changes can be made without the consent of all parties ah there you are no i can hari to maavine you can amend or close the transaction without getting the consent of all parties consent right without the consent of all parties right? that is irrevocable and when it comes to uh, lcs the irrevocable means if there is a amendment or cancellation it has to be with the consent of the beneficiary the confirmed bank and the issuing bank there are three three parties three parties right what are they issuing bank then beneficiary and then confirming bank depending In brackets, you have to say confirming bank if any, because all the bank, all the LCs are not confirmed. So if if you added confirmation, then you have to get the consent of the commission uh, confirming bank also. Otherwise, it is issuing bank and the bills. Okay. Then what happened to the uh, what happened to the Importer, importer's name is not there. Hmm. Why uh, importer is not a party to the irrevocable condition of the bank? Tell me. Because the issue. Maya Hari. Kada the Maya. Maya Hari powerful like me. But he is not a member. Uh, he is not a party to the. To say uh, irrevocable. Why is that? Because the issuing bank plays the role of applicant and issuing bank both. Yes, correct. Because issuing bank is the one who gives the irrevocable undertaking to the beneficiary. Issuing bank, not anybody else. Right. So therefore, uh, if a bank has to. Uh, Uh, at this uh, irrevocable clause to this then the issuing bank on behalf of the applicant the beneficiary and confirming bank if any are the people who are uh, uh, whom we have to uh, discuss when it comes to irrevocable undertaking right the banks only deal with documents and not the goods another thing the banks are only dealing with documents and not the goods ucp 600 sub article 14a where the ucp please turn it and see then uh, the phrase which comply fully with the terms and conditions of the document to create 
right? Uh, which comply fully with the terms and conditions of the document to create. Refers to the fact that the undertaking to pay is conditional upon the terms of the credit being met. Right? Okay. Application of UCP, uh, all document, all document to create or in simple LCs should be handled according to the ICC code of practice known as uniform customs and practice for document trade. The current code is defined in the 2007 revision ICC publication number 6. Right? Okay. DC as a method of payment. DC as a method of payment. The principal four payment methods, okay, uh, advanced payment, open account, collection, and this is so, the top three we have already done. Advanced payment, open account, and collection. The main feature of all these payment methods, right? Uh, it is very evident that either the seller or the buyer either the seller or the buyer they have to depend upon the good faith and performance of the other party right and exchange of goods for payment exchange of goods for payment then the document credit provides the seller and buyer with independent assurance in the exchange of goods for payment. Right? Yeah. Under UCP 600, there are certain terminology. In UCP, uh, URC 502, uh, there were a few areas, a new uh, terminology we learned. What are they? Hmm. What are the parties to document to pay? One party is important. Well, and according to the UCP 600, we call him applicant. Then importer's bank. Importer's bank is applicant's bank. We call them issuing bank. They are the people who issue the LCs. Then bank in exporter's country. Once we issue the LC, we advise the LC to the advising bank. Then exporters, other banks, optional, that is confirming bank, who are adding confirmation to the LC and exporter is beneficial. Exporter is beneficial. And if you want to, uh, if you want to do a change or cancel uh, LC, then all these parties should be active. All these parties should be together. Okay. An irrevocable DC can only be cancelled or amended with the agreement of all parties to the DC. The DC applicant is not a party to the DC contract, and as a result, the DC may be cancelled without the applicant, blah blah blah. But your commandant Tirunkala do not. Bank's consideration prior to issuing a DC. Issuing a DC is not a small thing, right? There are bank's consideration prior to issuing a DC. There are six considerations, right? Can you take, can you go through it? Can you go through it? 
I'll be back in one minute time. You have time to go through it. Yes, I'll have to get another bottle of water. Right? So please go through this. Then after that, we'll discuss. Tell me uh, what time your power cuts. Because I'll have to adjust my lectures. I don't know till when this is going to be continued. When are you having your power cuts? Three to five or five to seven? Anybody knows about your area? Oh, it, yeah, you're not bothered. Is it? You're not bothered. So you're currently experiencing power cuts now. Yeah, currently are experiencing power cuts. Yeah. Right, so that that will go on till three o'clock. It should, yes, three o'clock. Should, yeah, uh, same as here. Okay, fine. Let's go. It's going to be a very difficult time period for everybody. Now, the uh, bank's consideration prior to issuing a DC. When we are going to issue a DC, we can't just issue a DC, unlike uh, a document collection or something. Why? Can can somebody give me a reason why we can't just issue LC? The, the guys who are working in trade, they know whenever a person comes to open a LC, a new person, are we doing it or are we to give them a facility, LC facility? Tell me. Why? Why we have to be, uh, we have to consider various aspects. Tell me. My class is happy. When I was in the class, I was in the Because the bank has a obligation to make full payment if the customer is unable to pay. Very good. Very good. Can I have your name, please, Kevin. 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 Okay. Kevin. SCP Kevin. Answer Right? And then never give a monad karagatika on the Taganda. Well, that answer. You're correct. Because uh, banks, before we issue the LCs, you can't just issue LC because the Issuing bank is giving an irrevocable undertaking to the beneficiary that if the documents are complied with the terms and uh, terms and conditions of the LC, we will pay. Right? So therefore, there are certain considerations we'll have to think of. One is facility. We'll have to give them a facility, LC facility. Right? Because uh, as the LC constitute a definite obligation for the issuing bank to pay against the presentation of compliant documents, right? Uh, therefore, the customer should have an appropriate and adequate import facility, right? Then general security agreement. This we discussed earlier, general security agreement. Uh, everything under the sun and moon, we those clauses we put it to the general security agreement, and it's a it's an agreement given by the given, agreement given by the uh, customer when we open the LC. Now here um, we mentioned. If the documents are complied with the terms and conditions of the LC, the documents are complied with the terms and conditions of the LC, the bank is obliged to pay. Right? But if there's any other reasons, uh, we'll have to see whether what they are claiming is illegal or legal. Always there's a question mark. 
that is why we are asking for uh, general security equipment right under the general security agreement it runs into pages pages 14 15 16 pages nobody reads it right but within that general security agreement there are some uh, clauses to say even though the even though the customer is not liable for certain actions they are legally liable that's what they can I'm doing it make a label that you not happy you know they are legal label and again they are label you know come me upset on a right the map general security agreement uh, then status report on the beneficiary that also we have discussed uh, if you get a status report then we know who, what type of a customer we are going to handle then the goods right consideration should be given to whether the dc has been open to import goods that are considered usual for the particular customer right then workability of the dc Right. The last one is insurance. Insurance. Right. Last week we discussed about benefits of and disadvantages of a customer when they engage in international trade. Today we are going to discuss about benefits and disadvantages in document trade operations right let's see what are the benefits for the buyer payments are made on his behalf payments are made on his behalf in returning uh, sorry in return for documents that represent the goods and give him ownership of them then for the seller, he can talk to the issuing bank for payment instead of relying on the ability or willingness of the buyer. The disadvantages. Right? What are the benefits for the buyer? The payments are made on his behalf in return for documents that represent the goods and give him ownership of them. For the seller, he can look into the issuing bank for payment instead of relying on the ability or the willingness of the buyer. Sometimes the buyer, buyer may be not in a position to pay, but if you have open LC, yes. The issuing bank has to pay as a compulsory. Right? Disadvantages for the buyer, he may have to provide a marginal deposit when he opens the LC. Now, if the LC value is uh, US dollars 100,000, US dollars 100,000, now they, have, they should have a, uh, what do you call this, uh, facility. And we have to issue the uh, LCs or amendments according to the president. Right? Now for the seller, he cannot obtain payment unless unless he complies with all documented rate terms. Right? Okay. Bank's role in DC operations, LCs. Normally, they assist the settlement of international 
official transactions. Then provide safeguard for the parties involved. Safeguard for the uh, parties involved. Ensure payment, provided terms are complied with. Right? Then deal in documents and not in the goods. And they have a thumping amounts of uh, when they open a one LC they can they can raise thumping amount as interest commission various things right uh, uh, forex profit forex department interest commission so on so forth DC cycle, LC cycle, LC cycle I have given here. Can you spend about one minute? Go according to the numbering order, one from one, right? A comma terminology right? One minute per person and Finish. In the LC cycle, number one is the commercial contract between buyer and the seller. Right? So based on the commercial contract, the beneficiary or the seller will ship the goods. Now sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, based on the commercial contract, based on the commercial contract, uh, the applicant, the applicant will go to his bank, the issuing bank, and request them to open a LC, DC application, right? Applicant, applicant has to go there. What are the documents when you uh, apply for LC? What are the documents you have to submit? Hmm? What are the documents? Commercial invoices. Commercial invoice. invoice. Then so copies of the BN, the transport document. To open the LC? No. Commercial LC invoice. application, invoice, and uh, no. e-forms. No, commercial invoice is wrong. Performer invoice. Performance invoice. Performance invoice and? The LC application. Performer invoice and the LC application, that's it. Right? So all the contract terms are there in the performer invoice. All the LC application. Uh, all the uh, contract details, right? So uh, the applicant has to submit, applicant has to submit the bank, a DC application along with the performer invoice. All the integrity things is mentioned there. So based on that, the issuing bank will issue the LC. They will issue the LC. And they will uh, send the message on the Swift, right? And can any one of you can could 
you can tell me uh, what is the payment, uh, sorry, shift message type when you are sending LCs? 7700. Huh? 700. Empty? 700. Empty 700. Empty 700. Right? We, we have to uh, send the uh, message under empty 700. Message tag. And then it goes to the advice in bag. The advice in bag will advise the DC to the uh, beneficiary. Now the advice in bag. The pricing bag is uh, is the correspondent bag of the issuing bag. Correspondent bag of the issuing bag. But in most cases, it is the bag of the exporter. Right? Now, AC is also not working after the power cut. Give me one minute, AC can put that again. Kalinga, I don't know. 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 Uh, five four. Okay, sorry. Sweating like that, uh, right? So uh, when the advising bank when they receive the LC, they will just have a cursory glance and advise LC to the beneficiary, right? Are there any people in the class who are advising the export LCs to customers or in other? Uh, then normally we, we pay a cursory class. We are, we are not going to go into detail, right? Have I, having said that, we have to see that whatever the thing we have received, the advising bank is advising to the uh, beneficiary uh, in full, right? Then, uh, once the beneficiary receives the LC, then he will go through it, the LC, and then term, uh, terms and conditions one by one, and he will jot down everything. And then whether he can submit the documents after giving the, after sending the uh, goods, right? He will give the documents, he will give the documents, uh, to his bank for negotiation. Number six, document submitted for negotiations. What do you mean by negotiations? It's a new concept. Now, earlier in collection, we had to send the documents to the uh, collecting bank and then they will submit to the 
uh, customer, and once the customer pays, they will remit the money. But here it is not that. If the documents are complied with the terms and conditions of legacy, if the if the documents are complied with the terms, uh, terms and conditions of the LC, then the advising bank, not the advising bank, then we call it negotiating bank or nominated bank or negotiated bank. They can discount the bill and give the value to the customer. They can discount the bill and the value to the customer. Right? That is negotiation. If the, if the documents are complied with the terms and conditions, yes, then they will do it. That's a beauty in LCs, unlike uh, collection documents. After that, the uh, nominated bank or the negotiate, negotiating bank, they will send the documents, number eight, they will send the documents to the uh, issuing bank for the payment. But when it goes to the issuing bank, the issuing bank will again check the documents against the original uh, LC. Right? The original LC. And if if they if they find the documents are complied with the terms and conditions of the LC without any discrepancies, then they will pay. If it is discrepancies, they will advise it back to the uh, issuing bank. Uh, they, they will advise uh, back to the uh, advising bank. Then the advising bank will accept the discrepancies and inform the Asian bank, okay, please go ahead. Right? This is very important, the cycle. Over better concentrate on this and try to close it and then try to uh, draw the thing again. Right? Meet you again, effective. DC application. DC application. What do we do when a customer brings a DC application? What do we do when the customer brings a DC application? <laughs> right? Now, for the customer to come to the bank to open a DC, he, number one, is he should have a bank account. Right? Remember the amount? Okay. So uh, you have to have a LC facility. Why? Because as the issue bank, you have to give an irrevocable undertaking. Then once you receive the LC application, as you all must have seen the LC applications. First, you have to allocate a number. First, you have to allocate a number to the LC. Then, verify, verify applicant signature. Why we have to verify applicant signature? Hmm. 
ఫెసిలిటీ you must be having uh what do you call this uh when we open the aucs we have to mark the limits you have to mark the limits right millions of rupees or dollars so uh we have to see whether the customer is having adequate lc facility Check valid import license till or goods are within quota limit. Check valid import license are held. Right? A bit of a little valid valid import license. Let's see now. Right. Uh, number 6 check whether a status report on the beneficiary is held and up to date or required if new customer or new business existing customer right check whether a status report on the beneficiary is held and this status report has to be improved uh, this status report has to be uh, updated on a regular basis otherwise we will rely on wrong information right uh, if dc terms are fob or cfr we are going to learn that right but i'm sure you people know about it if it is fob or cfr not cifr uh cip the applicant must provide the insurance cover must provide the cover. okay uh insurance is a must then who is going to pay for the insurance is a mother issue the check application for full instructions we have to see whether the application has given full instruction check the applicant applicant for instructions that are consistent inconsistent unclear illegal or too detailed right make your come up and run it then uh, check application for full instructions the reimbursement authorization and everything has to be given right then compliance with the policies of the bank for example arms and explosives most of the banks they have their own policies internal policies that they don't open lcs for uh, certain goods arms arms and ammunition completely out all the banks the banks like hsbc i don't know about standard chartered uh, hsbc uh, they have certain other uh, policies the environmental policies which they say uh, they will not open lcs for to import logs into the country right we are going to see now etika balanna ona daggala balanna iverla thamai api number ek allocate kala me okkoma karanna picture la id
Pecerai ni. Saya pergi ke sana kau ada masa yang sih karin deh. Hah? Pecerai lah ya ini. Can you hear me? Oh, you are not with me. Fifteen or twenty minutes. Fifteen or twenty minutes. Ida pas eh LC karin de. Tapi jelek de. उत्तर ने normally within thirty maximum thirty five minutes we have to open the LC and we have to check everything everything has to be completed within thirty five minutes right even at that thing we like ne the other side throw garlic even when we this application ke me oti ke so keep coming all ten numbers. You have to do it within few minutes. Minutes in the sense, one minute or two minutes. Okay. Review of DCs prior to advising. Review of DCs prior to advising. Now, uh, when we open the LC, then we issue the LC to the uh advising bank when the advising bank receives the lc they also go through the lc first thing they want to know is the authentication is correct if the authentication is correct right uh, and the other thing is dc is not already expired if the lc is expired then it will be a problem for everybody so uh, there's no point of opening uh, uh, lc for if the lc has already expired right but may have transaction expire well when the corona pay for the other level then what do you mean by authentication correct what do you mean by authentication correct can somebody tell me? Now we'll tell you now what you're doing. Okay. So what do you mean by authentication is correct? When the L, when we send the LC uh, under uh, Swift message, when we send the LC under Swift message, it is auto authenticator. But if it is any other mode of sending the messages like uh, mail LC and all. Then we have to verify the uh, authorized signatories, right? To ensure whether we have received the transaction on a legitimate manner, right? Uh, then, issuing bank country is not located in a issuing bank, or issuing bank country is not located in a UN US sanctioned country. If there's a UN US sanctioned country, then you have to abide by the rules and regulations. So make sure that when you're opening the LCs, that you are not opening for UN US sanctioned countries. Like uh, Ivory Coast, 
North Korea, Iran, we have no US Union sanctioned countries. Then the available with or confirmation required in sections are completed. These amounts are not usually large values, round figures. Very important. These values are not large, unusually large values. ISBP what is, what, is, what is that? ISBP. International Standard Banking Practices. International Standard Banking Practices. So, International Standard Banking Practices are not governing rules. It's only a practice. Within the Abhi, we can't uh, We, we, should, we should not mention those uh, conditions. Terms and conditions, ISB beginning of the underway. Right? Uh, then, DC does not contain any conditions which are unacceptable or impossible to comply with. The insurance requirement is declared in the DC. Normally, it's 5%. Oh. The, uh, some other conditions, you know, that we, we can't accept. Those are separate. Then the insurance requirement, normally, you see, in the LC, it says 110%, minimum 120%, or 100%, 80%. Those things we had to specify, right? Important considerations when advising LCs. Um, do you have the Hard copies of UCP 600. Do you guys having hard copies of UCP? Yes, sir. Yeah. Then can you turn to Article 9? Can you turn to Article 9? Right. Article 9 is. Um, Advising of credit and amendments. So all these uh, details are being given there. Right? Then important consideration when advising LC is we have to talk about advising banks role and obligation. Advising bank role and obligation. Right? LC transmission method. We have to think of think of LC transmission transmission method. Is it swift message or uh, mail LC? We have to see. Right nowadays, a lot of guys oh, they will just advise the LC. They don't check. Right, him a bad check. Make a phone call. Check call. They'll give you the targets. A target is unknown. So, LC transmission method is one thing. Then, the advising procedures. 
and advising commission and amendments. To whom? To whom? Right? Okay. Advising, uh, if you receive the LC through, if you receive the LC through uh, swift message, right, or if you receive the LC through a mail, mail again, come on, go to the Check the message type. Uh, check the message type. The mail mail like humbra. Message type is check color right Then go for the verify card name. Check for authorized signatories. Yeah, we have the authorized signatories and uh, specimen signatures of the other banks. Right? A payment check But if it is it transmitted through SWIFT, then it is automatically authenticated. Right? Then advising commission. Investing commission to whom, whether to the buyer or the seller. Right. Uh, LC is not subject to use P600. What do you mean by that? LC is not subject to use P600. What do you mean by LC is not subject to UCP 600? Always, if the LC is uh, transmitted through uh, what do you call this uh, MT 700, then it is auto authenticated and it is subject to UCP 600. You don't have to mention separate. But sometimes, but sometimes these people uh, in small letters they insert LC is not subject to USP 600. In a scenario like that, can we accept such LCs? Hmm? Can we? Dallas, you know. But I am the humble, you know. Even when I was working for Standard Chartered also, I came, uh, I came across certain LCs. So it's, you have to be very, very careful when you advise the LCs. The small letters in uh, Now nowadays it is not happening because. LCs are majority, 99% LCs are open through uh, swift messages. So it's auto authentication. Right? LC is not subject to UCP 600. Normally we say, it's a must that we have to say, LC is subject to UCP 700. UCP 700, sorry, UCP 600. UCP 600. Is this 600? Again. Unanata? Keno. I mean, Samana is still still on. Chuti. According to Hanwan, LC is not subject to UCP 600. I can put a humble at the LC is not subject to UCP 600. Like, Yamuna, the other, we had a 
done in return. Right? Let's return it. And when we are advising the LC, uh, LC received from the corresponding bank, then when we are advising, we put a clause. At the end, we put a clause in accordance with the terms of Article 9 of UCP 600, the bank advise without engagement on the part having received the following transit transmission later, blah, blah, blah. Right? In accordance with the terms of Article 9 of UCP 600. Right? The bank advise without engagement. Then this advice constitute a letter of credit issued by the above bank and should be presented with the document draft of negotiation. Then, signed by authorized signatories, signed by uh, authorized signatories of the advising bank. Right? Okay. Advising commission and amendments. Beneficiary is the customer of the bank and beneficiary not a customer of the bank they can not be in your Beneficiary is a customer of the bank beneficiary not a customer of the bank if the beneficiary is not a customer of the bank I will not issue a care Then amendments, if there's any amendments, and clause for amendments. We have to deal with what is happening. Or come back later, my. Appe advice karan le, one. Jana parasya me. Then we still discuss about the Article Nine. Article 9, according to Article 9, the advising bank has to satisfy itself of authenticity of the credit or amendment. If it is cannot do so, if it yeah, sorry, if it cannot do so, it will have to revert to the bank from whom the LC was received. Right? Very well, but LC ka tibuna ki la, awa ki la. You are not obliged to advise LC. Gula kati hita inna ne LC ka awa ki na apni gavano karanda mona ka ne hime ka ne. Hime ka ne. Unless you have not added information, can say no. I am not prepared to do so. Right. But only thing is, if you are not advising the LC or the amendment, you have to go back to the, you have to go back to the uh, issuing bank and tell them. Right? Unless it has other disconfirmation, such an advice is without any engagement to honor or negotiate, even if uh, even if normal. Uh, sorry, even if nominated to do so. Then, if a bank has advised the LC through a particular advising bank or second advising bank to advise a credit, it must use the same bank to advise any amendment thereto. Right? They have advised, if, if they go in a path, 
So you have to follow the same path. Now, for example, can you see the board? Hello? Anything? No, sir, we can't see the board. Huh? No, you can't. We see cannot it. see the board. You cannot see the board. One moment. Right. Uh, even now, shall we take a, I think that some problem here. Uh, <laughs> I will get somebody to fix it. Uh, can we take a small break of 10 minutes hello yes sir yeah we'll have a comfort break of 10 minutes now it's uh 235 i'll get somebody to get the things sorted out right till then yeah. take a quick break of 10 minutes uh, sorry there's a small issue here that's why the language is rectified. Um, the advising bank, first they have to satisfy themselves regarding the authenticity of the credit or the amendment. If it, if it is advised through uh, SIFT MT700, then you don't have to worry about the thing. It's auto authenticated. Right? Uh, otherwise, We'll have to revert, revert it back to the uh, issuing bank if you can't satisfy with the authenticity. Unless it has added its confirmation, such an advice is without any engagement to honor or negotiate, even if nominated bank to do so. Right? Can remember uh, here. When we are advising the LC, we say in accordance with the terms of Article 9 of UCP 600. The bank advised without engagement on the part, having received the following till transmission dated, blah, 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 right? We are issuing the LC without engagement on the part of, on the part having uh, received the following till transmission. Every particular window na make it, right? We are not taking any responsibility of issuing the thing. Having said that, as a prudent bank, we have to uh, see all the angles that we are advising the correct thing. So unless it has added its confirmation, such an advice is without any engage engagement to honor or negotiate, negotiate, even if nominated to do so. If a bank has advised the LC through a particular advising bank 
or second advice in bank to advise a credit, it must use the same bank to advise in amendments there. This is what I wanted to uh, show it to you. Right? Okay. Uh, can you see the board? Yes, sir. Right. Now, if the issuing bank issuing bank is A, we advise the LC to another bank, advising bank, advising bank, uh, first class bank of uh, Abu Dhabi, right? That is B. But the thing is, the customer is having the uh, the beneficiary is having their account with National Bank of Dubai. Now we have advice to First Gulf Bank, but the accounts are with National Bank of Dubai. So in a scenario like this, the issuing bank, but they will do, uh, sorry, the advising bank will, this is the first advising bank, first advising bank. They, uh, they send to the second advising bank. Second advising bank. National Bank of Dubai. Right? This is the original LC. Then subsequently, you will receive an amendment. Now the issuing bank knows they are having correspondent banking facilities with B as well as C. B as well as C. So, because of that, the issuing bank will try to bypass B and advise directly to second advising bank. Bypass is an amendment. Right? Amendment. Direct to second advising. According to UCP 600, Article 9, this cannot be done. It is wrong. You can't do like that. Right? Even the amendment, even the amendment has to go first to B and then B to C. Right? That's what the, it says. You have to use the same path. And okay, then advising bank has to satisfy itself of the authenticity of the credit or amendment. If it cannot do so, it will have to revert to the bank from whom the LC was received. It may choose to advise the beneficiary clearly indicating that it has not been able to satisfy itself on the authenticity. Uh, uh, article 9 is important. Uh, practical issues are not. What are practic practical issues? Now, uh, it, it clearly says uh, if, if the advising bank doesn't want to advise due to the fact that they are not satisfied with themselves of the authenticity of the credit or the amendment. Right? The beneficiary can't demand uh, them to advise the LC to them. They can't demand. Only if the advising bank is ready to do that, they will do it. Otherwise, but the only problem is if the advising bank doesn't ready for, to do that, then they have to inform the issuing bank immediately. They have to inform the uh, immediately, right?
right uh, unless it had added its confirmation such an advice is without any engagement to honor or negotiate even if nominated to do so right advising of credits ucp 6 article 9 if a bank Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you now. Okay, fine. So we'll continue. Uh, if a bank receives a LC for advising and chooses not to do so, this is your prerogative, whether to advise or not, right? Not to do so, it must so inform without delay the bank from which the trade amendment or advice has been received. That means you have to immediately go back to the issuing bank and advise them. Then the confirm, a confirming bank may choose to advise amendment without extending its confirmation. Uh, mega are important, right? A confirming bank may choose to advise amendment without extending its confirmation. And if so, it must inform the issuing bank without delay and inform the beneficiary on its advice, in which case its confirmation is limited to the original terms of the LC. If I am going to explain this to you, uh, it's an interesting case. Now, originally, uh, the bank has advice bank has advised uh, LC um, LC is for US dollars 500,000 they have advice adding confirmation right so they have added confirmation Confirmed LCR. Yeah? Confirmed LC. That means add confirmation. We have added confirmation. Then when we are adding confirmation, we always check the bank risk and the country risk of the issuing bank. And if if we are satisfied only, we will add confirmation. Now here, uh, according to our uh, listing, uh, it is within our limits, so we have done it. Then, subsequently, there is an amendment. There is an amendment. This amendment is for increase the value by another US dollars. 100,000. Now the total LC value now stands at 600,000. US dollars 600,000. Whereas the second amendment, 100,000. So the bank uh, or the beneficiary is requesting us to add confirmation to the amendment 2. But we have the prerogative whether to add or not. The reason is if 500 is okay with us due to the uh, risk factors. Now, if you are going to uh, add another 100,000 to confirm another 100,000, that will exceed our limits. So, the bank can decide, sorry, we are not going to, uh, we are not going to add confirmation to this one. You got it? So, we are not going to add confirmation to this one. So, but we we will advise LC. We will advise LC without adding confirmation. Without adding confirmation to the beneficiary. We advise LC without adding confirmation to the beneficiary. Now, in 
this whole scenario, uh, the entire LC value is now US dollars 600,000. But we will be liable only for the first part only. Is it clear? We will be liable only for the first part which we have had confirmation. Only thing is, we have to inform the issuing bank immediately uh, and uh, in, in, uh, inform the issuing bank and we have to inform, inform validation. Immediately. Tell them, okay, I'm prepared to advise the LC, uh, sorry, advise the amendment, but I'm not going to add uh, confirmation. Is it clear? Right. Then confirmation of DC. Confirmation of DC. Here you have to make a read. Your homework is you have to read article 7, 8, 9, and 10. And article 9, I have discussed with you. Now, confirmation of DC. Confirmation of DC is confirming banks undertaking article 8. Article 8 is a confirming banks undertaking. Right? I would like to request you all. I would like to request you all to uh, take one minute more. One minute is more than enough, right? Try to compare Article 7 and Article 8. Article 7 is issuing banks undertaking. Article 8 is confirming banks undertaking. Cursory glance said, seven like a product one, article one, two, three, four, Hathra, Yantang at a glance, Banand, then do the same thing with article eight. Hmm? One, two, three, four sections. It's identical. It is identical. Because that means when you add confirmation, you will be in the same shoes of the issuing bank, right? Whatever the issuing bank's undertaking, responsibilities, obligations, the con when you add confirmation, the confirm confirming bank will take up the same undertaking, right? So that is why the bank has to decide whether to add confirmation or not, or whether you are prepared to add confirmation or not. Now, if the beneficiary of the credit has some doubt about the ability of the DC opening bank to arrange the reimbursement, he may request the opener to arrange for the DC to be confirmed by the advising bank. Nowadays, I heard a lot of customers countries, a lot of customers overseas, they are requesting their banks or they are requesting of, uh, uh, the LC opening banks, uh, opening parties here to add confirmation to their LCs. They need people to add confirmation. Right? Because the country situation is not so good. So they didn't want to take any chance. Right? So they may request the opener to arrange for the DC to be confirmed by the advising bank. And uh, normally the advising, the DC confirmation charges are for the beneficiary, are for the beneficiary. But nowadays I heard because of this country situation, they insist, the buyers are insisting on the, the correction, 
insisting on the collection, uh, sorry, uh, insisting on uh, adding confirmation, not collection, in, insisting on adding confirmation. Because they don't trust the country or the banks. And the funniest thing is they want the issuing bank or the issuer or the applicant to bear the confirmation charges. The normal trend is applicant is not uh, is not the party who is going to undertake this uh, Confirmation part, confirmation at card uh, normally the beneficiary will pay. We got a beneficiary, the risk is in. The risk is with the beneficiary, so the beneficiary has to pay. But here, we have no other option. Now the customers are telling us, okay, you get this LC confirmed, and the confirmation charges are also very high because of a country situation and you have to bear the cost, not me. These days, uh, you can't collect because of uh, this rating channel. Any, any country, any bank, when they add confirmation to our LCs, our LCs issued by the uh, Sri Lankan banks, right? Forget about international banks operating in Sri Lanka, even if it is uh, HSBC or Standard Chartered or Deutsche Bank material. The country matters, right? So they will request has to add confirmation and the uh, uh, charges has to be borne by the applicant, right? So obviously, the, uh, the when you do the costing part, you have to add confirmation charges also to the value and the prices will escalate, right? If the opener agrees, the opening bank will ask the advising bank to add this confirmation to the DC. Confirmation of a DC constitute a definite undertaking by the advising bank to assume the obligations and liabilities of the opening bank under the credit. Right? Restrict all negotiations to the confirming bank. When you add confirmation, you have to, if, if you are, when you open the LC, you have to mention confirmation to be added. At that time, you have to say charges to whom? Charges to beneficiary or charges to applicant. Right? Uh, Then uh, confirmation of a DC constituted definite undertaking. Uh, restrict all negotiations to the confirming bank. This is a must. This is a must. Confirm. Restrict all negotiations. Restrict all negotiations to the confirming bank. Right? That means when we add confirmation, when we add confirmation, if you are the exporters bank, and when you add confirmation, you have to make sure the negotiations are restricted to the confirming bank. Because why? If you are adding confirmation, we want to make sure 
that the documents are coming to us for negotiations and if if the doc, if the documents are uh, uh, compliant or discrepant that decision has to be taken by the confirming bank that is why we we put uh, negotiation restricted to the confirming bank uh, if if we have mentioned negotiation restricted to confirming bank but if the customer or the uh, exporter if they negotiate the documents with some other bank then the confirmation will see will cease confirmation will cease now again i will explain this to you an example we add confirmation we add confirmation right and negotiation restricted negotiation restricted to confirming bank negotiation restricted to confirming bank right then the documents received documents received and instead of giving this to the confirming bank say bank a this guy will give it to bank b b the bank say ga mega restrict karna the information restrict karna the and negotiation restrict karna the then it will be a discrepancy then it will be a discrepancy and the confirmation will cease no more validity of the confirmation because they have violated the condition right if you have paid uh, uh, 10000 us dollars as confirmation charges these days for us it's very high uh, 10000 us dollars for as confirmation charges well there's no use because confirmation has already ceased without any responsibility because whatever the money i have collected as confirmation charges i am not going to return it no right and i don't have any risk cost uh if the open agrees the opening bank i'm oh, sorry it go kid yeah in return the confirming bank receives a confirmation commission this is collected from the beneficiary or is claimed from the issuing bank if so director confirm this is provide double protection to the beneficiary so double protection to the beneficiary this can sometimes be confirmed by a bank other than the advising bank and but in the pool right abe ekama de Once you confirm, you'll see there's any uh, amendments or anything. Then, and if you have restricted the negotiations also, amendments should be made to restrict the problem. Right? And it's a double protection to the beneficiary. Consideration for the confirming bank. Now, oh, when we are adding confirmation, what are the considerations for the confirming bank? Confirmation should never be added to 
to credits unless specifically requested by the issuing bank. Very important. If the issuing bank gives you the authority to add confirmation, don't go and do it. If something happens, you will be on the mat. Right? You have violated the rules and regulations. So always make sure if you are going to add confirmation to an LC, always make sure that the issuing bank has specifically given uh, the authority for you to add confirmation. Right? Okay. Subarticle 8D. The action to be taken if confirming bank is not prepared to confirm. 8D. What it says. If a bank is authorized or requested by the issuing bank to confirm a credit but is not prepared to do so it must inform the issuing bank without delay and may advise the credit without confirmation if if you are not happy to add confirmation to lc then what you can do is you have to go back to the issuing bank immediately and then uh, you can advise the LC without adding confirmation. You, you can advise the LC without adding confirmation. Right? Okay. Then Ensure that DC issuing bank has the ability to reimburse us for drawings under the DC. Okay. Uh, we must also be satisfied with the bank's risk and count risk of the issuing bank. So it must. It's a must. Right? It is essential to carefully scrutinize the DC terms to check that they can be met realistically by the beneficiary sometimes unscrupulous banks will permit disguise requirement in their DCs that if not met will allow for the rejection of documents no before adding confirmation sometimes some sometimes some Culprits, they will insert various conditions which you can't uh, meet. They can do it before you add confirmation. You have to be very, very careful. Obtain approval, uh, appropriate approval when the bank is not well known to us. Appropriate approval when the bank is not well known to us. Right? Uh, countries factors are involved. Countries factors are involved. For example, countries like Nigeria, Argentina, Iran, Iraq, etc. I think we have to add one more to this list. What is it? Hmm? Nigeria, Argentina, Iran, Iraq. Tamaka Dapi at Kando Negre. Syria. Syria. Uh huh. Tama. Mr. Gawadhan Pulang. Sri Lanka. Neither. 
profit the a a boat team the main the amount is large if the amount is large be careful be careful to a double check before you add confirmation reimbursement will be longer than 180 days or when expiry is longer than 360 days right you have to be careful before adding confirmation Okay. Then availability of a LC. Availability of a LC. Availability of a LC means um, article Article six, Article six, right? This is contain specific clauses regarding the availability. How they available? At which bank the beneficiary should present the documents in order for the credit to be paid. The second one: How the beneficiary will get the funds? How the beneficiary will get the funds, right? So there are many important factors like availability. Where is the credit available? PC can be made available at the counters of either the issuing bank or the nominated bank, or any bank in the case of freely negotiable rate, right? DC can be made available at the counters of either the issuing bank or the nominated bank or any bank in the case of a freely negotiable credit. Right? Okay. How is the credit available? It can be available due to three factors. One is by payment, or by acceptance, or by negotiation. If I take it by payment, the DC should be made available by either site or deferred payment. Right? If it is site payment, payment should be made on demand. As the terms payment are immediate, right? If it is a, a side payment, it is payment is immediate, so it's on demand. Article twelve of UCP six hundred, they talk about the nominative bank. Nominate uh, Article twelve of UCP six hundred, nominated bank, nominated bank does not necessarily have to accept the nomination by the issuing bank. Now, it's a really interesting article. Sometimes, as per Article 12, the banks will nominate, the issuing bank will nominate a particular bank in the seller's country to nominate, uh, they will nominate to uh, uh, negotiate the documents. Whereas that particular bank doesn't want to do it, get involved. Right? If it is right. Uh, credit may or may not require drafts to be presented. If it is side, payment as side, then I draft tech issue. I will come at a custom suit on in the draft tech issue on the way. We even at the end of the good at now. You cook the 
normal with the way where they know right deferred payment there are three types i said by payment by acceptance by negotiation right by payment take a apikua either um, necessarily have to accept its nomination by the issuing bank then deferred payment deferred payment means terms and conditions of a credit issued on deferred payment terms right that means payment is not immediate payment is not immediate it can be on a future day right then the payment is at a time in the future determinable in accordance with the rate. Right? A draft is not required to be presented. The a very important difference between a deferred payment bill and an acceptance bill is drafts. Right. Normal acceptance bill, it is uh, acceptance bill, uh, the document is a must. Document is a, uh, a draft is a must. A draft is a must. But in deferred payment, Draft is not a critical document. Draft is not a critical document. Then by acceptance. By acceptance, terms and conditions of a, a LC issued on acceptance terms. Payment is not immediate. then drafts are required to be presented drafts are required to be presented payment is on the maturity date of the draft payment is on the maturity date of the draft the main difference between the deferred payment and the acceptance is in the acceptance we have a uh, uh, acceptance we ha we have a draft but if it is deferred payment we don't have a draft right acceptance credit provide a means by which the beneficiary may be able to obtain finance by discounting the bank's accepted Right? By negotiation. By negotiation. By payment, by acceptance, by negotiation. By negotiation. Negotiation has been defined in Article 2 of UCP 600. Article 2. Article 2 of UCP 600. It says definitions, definitions it, negotiation means the purchase to the uh, sorry uh, negotiation means the purchase by the nominated bank purchase by the nominated bank right a credit available by negotiation should be indicate indicate either a nominated bank authorized to ne negotiate or credit which is freely negotiable in which case any bank is nominated bank if it is a 
freely negotiable. It can be negotiated with any bank. It can be negotiated with any bank. Right? Again, I freely negotiable can be. The drafts are drawn on the issuing bank at sight of users. Right? Okay. Now, availability and recourse. Availability and recourse. I have given a small chart. Right? How the availability, if the availability is by negotiation, the tenor can be site or users. Recourse. Yes, under the Bill of Exchange Act. Right? By payment, site or deferred. If it is by payment, there is no recourse under DC. Right. Then acceptance, use and so on. Acceptance, tenor by use and root ever. There is no recourse. Right? Okay. Availability and drafts make it balagana. Then handling of discrepant documents presented by the beneficiary. Handling of discrepant documents. Make a balanda article 1516. Right? Handling of discrepant documents presented by beneficiary. Return the documents to the beneficiary for correction and represent within the validity period as per UCP 600 of Article 14C. Shall we jot down those things? Right. I hope you can see that. Now, we have received a set of documents. First, we'll say uh, the beneficiary has given a set of documents to the beneficiary's bank and the LC. Right? Beneficiary. Beneficiary bank is what do you call that bank? Hmm? Negotiating bank. Negotiating bank. Now these people have given the documents. Beneficiary has given the documents to the negotiating bank. Right? And if we find when, when the negotiating bank <laughs> received the document from the beneficiary, they will check against the they will check against the uh, LC document before they send the documents to before they send the documents to the issuing bank. Right? So within the valid period, they will they will have so many options. They will have so many options. That is um, 
remit under approval with reference to the DC and with the consent of the beneficiary. Right? Within the beneficiary's consent, request for TEDx approval from issuing bank, confirming bank against the discrepant documents presented. Negotiate under reserve. Those are the options we are having. Now, if the documents are complied with terms and conditions, they will send the uh, money to the beneficiary. They will send the money to the beneficiary. Right? If it is not compliant, if it is not compliant, then they will ask the beneficiary, they will return the documents back to Return the documents of the beneficiary, right? Saying that we can't uh, negotiate this set of documents, right? <laughs> ये <laughs> <laughs> Documents written, the promise written, documents written, 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 you know, you collect it and give it to us. Then, where is it? You know, sorry, I can't correct it. Uh, this is beyond my control. In that case, we can't do, we can't do negotiation. We can't give value. Negotiation means giving value. We can't give value. We will send the documents on approval basis. The beneficiary will inform the uh, applicant, uh, they are good friends. They will tell Majang, small issue. I can't say, uh, uh, adjust this uh, document. Right? So therefore, uh, if I send, are you willing to accept it? No other issues. Amicable settlement ticket, you know. Amicable settlement ticket, you know. Right? There are, you know, customer will come to the bank and tell you, okay, you better send the documents to the beneficiary or the beneficiary is banned uh, on approval basis. On approval basis, right? So with the beneficiary's consent, request the telex approval from the issuing bank. Sometimes you might ask for telex approval, right? Sometimes you might ask for telex approval. A telex approval like the Apikena, okay. You give us the approval immediately, right? So that all these things is subject to the issuing bank and the confirming. If they have added confirmation. Negotiate under reserve indemnity from the beneficiary. Sometimes, if the beneficiary is good, the beneficiary is good, uh, the bank is prepared to negotiate the documents and give value. But under reserve, under reserve, under reserve means. Okay, uh, 
we will negotiate the document and give it to you. If something goes wrong, we are going to debit you. If something goes wrong, we are going to debit you. Right. Okay. Then inoperative documentary credit. Inoperative documentary credit. Inoperative documentary credit means there are certain inoperative clauses in the uh, LCs. So my advice to you as a uh, LCA practitioner is don't incorporate any uh, inoperative clauses in your LCs. Right? Always discourage to attempt by issuers or DCs to uh, attempt by issuers and DCs we can. Then the customers are the my can you matter may have a clause at that may have a clause at that again. But as a bank, as a prudent bank, you should be able to tell the customers, go to hell, no way. We don't want to put such clauses, right? Do not issue pre-advice of DCs unless it intends to issue the operative instrument. Right? Okay. Examples of inoperative clauses. Now you can understand examples of inoperative clauses. One is payments are to be made only once the goods have been cleared through customs. How the hell we can do it? Payments are to be made only once the goods have been cleared through the customs. We have nothing to do with that. We are dealing with So the key the can man may uh custom sling, custom barrier sling, never out of the mangiwanigil is beyond our control. Right? So don't put clauses like that. So, second one, the DC is to become operative only upon issuance of an amendment. Only upon issuance of an amendment. That an import license has been issued. Right? Okay. Uh, the DC is to become operative only upon receipt of uh, export proceeds from a back to back LC. Right? May I done remember that LCs are independent. The day, the DC is to become operative only upon receipt of performance guarantee acceptable to the issuing bank. Right? Those are additional things. So we should not put those inoperative clauses in our LCS. Right. Today we have covered. Uh, we have, di have discussed about uh, LCs. We have discussed about uh, how the LCs are being opened, then advising, advising banks' obligations. Then we discuss about adding confirmation. When you add confirmation, uh, you have get a double protection, right? All those things we have discussed. Now it is time for the questions. Today's all. Can somebody give me the answers for the first one? Which which of these concept of a buyer can be addressed by appropriate terms and conditions in a letter of trade? Which of these? Concerns of a buyer can be addressed by an appropriate 
terms and conditions in a letter of credit. ക്വാളിറ്റി Can we put an appropriate term? No. No. Would serve acceptable quality. Now, one student say no. ൾസി No. Uh -huh. Good sir, dispatch on time. Good on. Uh, yes. Yes. How how we are going to control it? We can uh, insert a shipment date. I mean a later shipment date. Yes. Yes. Very good. Good sir, delivered on time. That's also we can we can say. Would should be received or not before this date? Right. Okay. Number two, okay. sir. Yes. Uh, yes. With uh, regarding to goods of acceptable quality, oh. uh, as a bank, we have to examine the documents only and not. We 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 have to examine the documents only. Very good. So considering that. can we say no or is the correct answer yes yeah you are you are asking me of uh, part uh, b of 1 yes right goods are of acceptable quality what is the answer yes or no can we control it Yes or no? Uh, I would say no because we focus on seeing the documents only, and the quality of the goods are not coming under the purview. I say. Kevin, that's you. Yes. Yes, Kevin. Kevin, uh, here the banks are only dealing with documents. We are not dealing with goods. we don't go and inspect the goods only thing we want to ensure that the goods are of acceptable quality yes correct right in that case we we'll have to get an adish uh, independent third party to do do the inspection and give us the certificate so if we can get a inspection certificate from a a uh, uh, reputed third party a uh, uh, good survey company this more than enough for us so we we can assure that the goods are of acceptable quality because 
we have given them certain criteria to check and they have checked and they have think of yes right that is why the answer is yes we can do it okay sir understood thank you right what is the first step in the letter of trade process a b c or d a b c or d first step c e c yes by and shall i agree detail of transaction correct this one three Bank A will receive a documentary credit opened by Bank B. Confirmation instructions says confirm. Me me me. Magi matamay yan yah. Confirmation instructions L C K gan ne. Confirmation instructions confirm. So that means we want to have a confirmed L C. Bank A is not prepared to add their confirmation to the documentary credit. Which of the following should be bank A's action? A, B, C, or D? D. Hmm? D. Uh, C. C. What about others? Two more. They got given a hurry. They can B and they can C. And B is return the credit to bank B. C advise the credit to beneficiary without adding the confirmation, and inform bank B without delay. What do you think? What is the most appropriate one? B or C? The correct answer is C. We have to advise the LC, but we have to specifically mention to them. Look, we have not added our confirmation. We are just advising the LC. Without any responsibility or engagement in our part, right? Okay. Number four. What do you understand by the workability of a credit? What do you understand by the workability of a credit? So that means, I think we have discussed it earlier. Workability of credit is to see whether the terms and conditions can be met. If we can meet the terms and conditions, then it is okay. Because sometimes the customers will ask so many additional things, right? And uh, we are not in a position to put it in the LCs. You know, hundred pay workability when in a right. Then number five, what do you understand by term negotiation? What do you mean by negotiation? Article two one of the you know interpretations of negotiation. Negotiation means giving value in simple giving value. But if you want to write a full answer, please refer to article. Uh, two of UCP six hundred definitions. Take it there.
right? Okay. So we have covered the DC part. Uh, the, the discussion on UCP 600 articles. A bit of a discuss current donor. I may make a current is I want to finish types of credit next week. Right? We'll, we'll finish types of credit. And before we discuss the article, uh, articles of UCP 600, from today itself, right? I'm going to go on a articles. They uh, cut Balande Kila collection. I hope you you all have covered all those articles. From today onwards, at least three articles a day you have to read. At least three articles a day you have to read. And if you can't understand, it doesn't matter. But if you once you read and try to try to do it once or twice, then uh, you will get some understanding, some understanding, right? So we are going to discuss the all 39 articles from next week after finishing the uh, special types of LCs, we are going to do it, right? Any other issues? Any other questions you have? I'll call it a day because uh, it is here. Here, Apo writes, you know, I'm not going to get the like up here, you know, I'll be following next week. Next week, we are going to discuss types of LCs and then. Uh, UCP 600 articles. When we are uh, discussing the UCP 600 articles, to get ready for that, please read at least three articles a day. Right? I am not asking you to read all 39 in one day. You want to go to the Three articles a day. Three articles a day. Then you will be covering about 20 articles. So easily we can discuss the first part. Right? All right. Any questions on what we have discussed today? Please ask me. Any areas if you want certain clarifications? We had a lot of disturbances. Any, any questions? Okay. In that case, we will call it a day. Hope to meet you next week. Right? Oglan Tang Gana now. But I will surrender Petra to put that tongue. You didn't think I even can. Right? You don't listen with it. Okay. See you then. Please go through the uh, handouts and uh, study the UCP 600. Right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Okay.